Hi YouTubers, and today we're going to have a look at, well, British religion, religion in Britain. And um, some interesting things have come up. First of all, secularism. We hear about secularism all the time, but we very rarely, rarely, or really, rarely, we very rarely hear the word secularism without the prefix of militant. Um, but what does militant mean? Um, there aren't people going out there with guns going, I'm a militant atheist or anything like that. So, so what does the militant mean? Um, we, in this sense, they're using it as, uh, to mean the sort of thing of aggressive. But of course, militancy needn't just be aggressive. Um, it can be something like active. It can mean active. It has different meanings of the word. You have a Christian militancy, which tends to try and save people from sin. You wouldn't say they're aggressive, just militant Christians. And I think in the same way um, we can take it on the chin when we're called militant secularists. But um, it makes us sound as if we're some sort of uh, aggressive mob that's coming together, like the militia, um, which is not true, obviously. However, we'll go on and have a look at the other aspects of why Britain is a secular country. And this is without any need for the word militancy or militant. OK, in a, some polls that have been around lately. Now, I know statistics can be made up to prove anything and all those sort of things. But these are, are interesting polls and we'll take a look at them. I mean, yes, 97 percent of polls are wrong. I, I appreciate that. Um, well, actually, they're not. But I made that figure up because that's the way polls are. <laughs> anyway, let's get on. Um, there was one particular poll. Uh, it's the Angus, Angus Reid Public Opinion Poll. And in this, it was really trying to find out if people believed in creationism in Britain. Now, 17% um, believe that God was created. Uh, in fact, <laughs> God created man, not was created by man, which is also true, but that wasn't the question. 17% um, believe in God creating man. Now, that's quite a horrifying figure to me. Um, I actually expected it to be less. I thought about 5% perhaps, something like that. I didn't expect that many people to be that thick. But uh, there you are. Um, it's, it's true. But 69% um, or they believe in evolution, uh, or at least follow the facts of evolution. And this does change outside London. Now in London, um, outside London, 74% actually um, follow evolution, and uh, in London, 60% only. 14% um, had no idea of what to think, or basically just couldn't give a shit. Um, but it's an interesting figure. Um, that we still have 17% of people in Britain, on average, that, um, that, that believe that Sky Fairies made us. Um, and something we've got to work on. I know it's not as bad as America. Uh, they've really got their work cut out. But um, things are swinging our way. It was a lot worse just a few years ago. So um, from that, we know that evolution is generally believed in. Right, any official uh, government-sponsored British, British Social Attitudes Survey, which they do each year, and they have, this is the 29th, and the good thing about that is you can collate the figures from each poll, obviously, and see, see how things have changed over the years. So we'll have a look at that. Now, 81% agreed that religion uh, should be separate from politics and the economy. 81%. Now, 6% disagreed, um, which is, you know, those that want religion and politics together. But that's only 6%. Uh, the others, again, probably didn't give a shit. But when asked if they belong to a particular religion, 53% said no and 42% said yes. 76% uh, said that uh, religious leaders should not influence how people vote and 6% said they should. Which is interesting because it got a... 81% agreed that religion should be separate from politics and the economy, and then you get 76% saying that religious leaders should not influence how people vote. Um, you'd expect them to be the same. What they've done is, like, I suppose, given the same question slightly differently, and people have just gone, oh, I don't really understand. Um, but still, it's a high proportion. Three quarters, at least, um, say, keep, uh, say keep politics separate from religion.
Okay. So, um, uh, da, 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 let's have a look. Now, this is an interesting fact. 70 percent, I'll say it again, 77 percent of those over 66 say that they are religious. A high proportion of the elderly. Now, that compares to 35 percent of those between 18 to 25. Huge difference. Um, the young, however, do differ greatly when ethnic background is taken into account. And <clears throat> in that 18 to 25 bracket. Okay, 24% of British, uh, white British people, or youngsters, state they are religious. But Bangladeshis, um, that goes up to 97%. 95% um, with Pakistanis, 89% Black African, 87% uh, Indian, 58% Black Caribbean. Um, when asked if religion makes a difference in their life, 68% um, of Muslims said yes, but only 12% of Catholics, and I bet it wasn't a good difference. However, um, why did I just tell you all that? Well, it seems that the government um, is worried about secular, militant secularists. And they have appointed um, a minister of religion. Um, they've been listening to people like George Carey, the old uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, that says that militants say, you know, and the Pope. I mean, people seem to listen to that guy, I don't know why. But um, they've been listening to him saying, oh, it's these militant secularists. Oh, we must fight back. And um, so what have they done? Minister of Religion has been produced. Um, who is Baroness Warzai? Ah, now I must get on to this. Actually, it's not Minister of Religion, it's Minister of Faith. It's a sort of part-time job because Baroness Warzai has also um, been given a job in the Home Office. Um, in foreign foreign office, I should say, not the Home Office. You wouldn't want to hear, would we? Um, anyway, so um, who is Baroness Warzai? Well, if you don't know her, especially if you're uh, an American, um, she is. Um, she was a lawyer, um, trained in law, and she has her own law firm still, in fact, today. Um, uh, but going back even further, she is the daughter of an immigrant immigrant, a Pakistani immigrant, who came over to Britain. He was a uh, kind of mill worker to start with, um, built up his own business, I believe it was in bed beds or something like that, and he's built up a, a multi-million pound business. And he's done very well for himself, um, because he used the um, sort of conservative uh, pattern of, of growing up in Britain, as uh, she followed also into the Conservative Party. So, um, but she says that she comes from a humble background, a working class background, um, which um, I'm not sure what her father was doing when she was uh, very young, but he, as I say, is, is a multi-million pound businessman at least. And um, it's a bit like me saying that I come from a hunting hunter-gathering uh, background, you know. Um, it doesn't matter what her father did, uh, she herself has uh, come from a fairly wealthy background. Anyway, that's just the first thing um, that I would point out about her. So what's she done? Well, she moved in, she moved up into the Conservative Party. Uh, she worked as a, as a lawyer and she tried to become an MP for a local area. Um, unfortunately, she wasn't actually, um, you know, vo nobody voted for her, not enough people voted for her, so she didn't become an MP, which was a bit of a shame because when David Cameron put together his um, his cabinet, as it were, he wanted uh, a woman in there who was Muslim. And um, so he couldn't have her there because she wasn't an MP, so what he did was made her a, a peer of the realm, a House of Lords. And so she became known as Baroness um, Was I. And hence Baroness Warzo, and he gave her the ministerial post of running, or at least the post of running the Conservative Party as, as Conservative Party Chairman. Um, it's a position I think she, she co-hosted with someone else, but anyway, there she was. She's now up to uh, being Conservative Party Chairman, and as I say, goes along to all the meetings and the ministerial jobs. Um, not everybody in 
British politics has actually ever voted to go there. Um, it's a bit like Nick Clegg, our Deputy Prime Minister. Um, he actually lost the last election. His party came third. I mean, uh, there are more than three parties, but there's only real three parties that most people ever voted for. So um, his party lost. But uh, in order for the Conservatives to get in, they had to sort of jump into bed with the ones that lost so they could get in and have a coalition government. Um, I'm just explaining this for people who don't live here. Now, he is actually an atheist, a, a secularist, and uh, doesn't believe in God, uh, which is great. Our Deputy Prime Minister in Britain doesn't believe in God. And I'm just going off the subject slightly from Baroness Ward's eye, but I thought it was worth mention that recently he was at... Um, he was doing a speech, and he was doing a speech about homosexuals, homosexual marriage and all the rest. And in his speech, he actually released the speech to the press before he'd actually done it. And in the speech, it said these bigoted people, um, talking about some of the religious people who are being bigoted in their opinions. But, oh no, he, he, he was brought up on that before, and he quickly changed it and put in some people, or, yeah, some people might think like this, you know. But what he meant was bigoted from the religious Christians. And he, he got sort of drawn up for it. Oh, he said, well, I would never have said that. I, I took it out of the speech. I never. Why wouldn't he have said that? Why shouldn't he say that? Go out and say it. It's true. He obviously hadn't seen my video, had he, that I did on uh, Christians eat more chicken. Um, if he'd have seen that, he could have had a reason, couldn't he, to call them bigoted. But uh, obviously he didn't know enough about the, uh, how to argue these points and decided to leave it alone. Um... Fair enough. But it's a shame, um, because I've lost all respect for the man, because he could have said it and just... There's nobody out there in, Brit politics, in politics in Britain today who's prepared to stand up and say what they think. Uh, apart from perhaps one guy uh, who really does say what he thinks, the... Um, uh, if I can just remember his name, uh, which I can't at the moment. Um, sugar, I really hate that when I, that happens. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, Nigel Farage of UKIP. He's the only one that actually ever says what he means and what he thinks, and everyone goes, ooh, that's shocking. Um, but anyway, I, I like the guy, but um, that's beside the point. Nothing to do with what I'm saying. Baroness Warzai. Let's go back to Baroness Warzai. Um, right. So, there she is, chairman of the, uh, the Conservative Party, the leading party in Britain. And she gets in trouble. Well, expenses again, you know, ministerial expenses. What had she done? Well, she'd, she'd already claimed that she, you know, she had um, shares in her father's business. Um, she'd already claimed that um, you know, she had her own law firm. But she hadn't claimed um, that she had a house in London that she was getting rent from, property. She's a land, landlady, you know. So she hadn't claimed that bit. And, but there was another thing as well. She, was, she had claimed uh, £2,000 for staying at a house of a gentleman, an acquaintance, um, and uh, she claimed that money, but he said no, she didn't pay me any money, um, so she claimed money falsely, apparently. But they let her off that one. Um, they let her off that one because it was her word against his. She said she paid him, and he said he hadn't. Now, in normal uh, business circles and I'm in business and I have to you know show my accounts to the government you know as, as you do I would not um, if I claim something like staying away two thousand pound bill I would have to have a receipt you know I'd have to have a receipt I couldn't just go oh bugger it just put two thousand pound down I'll stop with someone and just you know their word against mine I'll get away with it but somehow she did she got away with it um, just said his word against hers. Now, what is the government doing with their ministers? I don't know. Um, surely you have to have a bloody receipt to, before you claim something. Um, it's fundamental law of business, you know? Anyway, I'm going off the subject again. These things just roll me up. And why didn't anybody ask that? Where's the receipt? That's all it is. Where's the receipt? We well, don't get it then. You know, she should not have been paid the money. Anyway. <sighs> right, I'll come back in a minute. So Baroness Warzai became a bit of an embarrassment to the government and they needed to remove her at the reshuffle, as they like to call it, when they get rid of the old chaff. Um, and interestingly, in the reshuffle, we have a brand new um, health secretary who, who previously said that he really likes homeopathy and thinks it should be paid for on the NHS. You couldn't make it up, could you? Anyway, that's beside the point. In this reshuffle, they got rid of Baroness Warzai. Um, she was always one of those people that said that she 
she was not a, put there as a puppet. She wasn't there as a trophy uh, person. She was her own woman, her own boss. So when they asked her why she shouldn't actually be removed from, um, you know, from government, from that position, she pleaded that uh, in a newspaper article, she pleaded that um, she shouldn't be removed because she was a woman and not white. Yeah. Still, there you go. Figure it out for yourself. So let's go on. Baroness Warzai. What's her religious beliefs? Right. Um, she's been in trouble with her own people, as it were, the Muslims. Um, in Islam. She's a, she is a Muslim member. And she's in trouble because, uh, well, basically she's part of a government that supported troops being in Muslim countries, uh, like Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, and she's had eggs thrown at her whenever she's been in sort of Muslim areas and things. But on top of that, there was a case recently, um, well, the last year or so, that a load of uh, it was basically a child pornography, a child prostitution ring had taken place to supply young girls for uh, Asian men, uh, Muslim men it turns out. Although they don't say that, they say Asian men, but it was quite obvious. And she spoke up nicely about that. She said, well, it's in the culture in which these men have been brought up, then she's not surprised these sort of things happen, something like that. And of course that's made her really unpopular again in, in Muslim circles. So you would think, mm, okay, she's, um, <laughs> I couldn't blame her. I actually agree with her on that one, but uh, there you go. Uh, next thing, you know, you know what these people are like. They don't like that. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, so the government sort of uh, tried to separate themselves from her on that one as well. Um, instead, in fact, recently we've had um, one of those, one of those um, looks into the, into the case, as it were, and... Of course, they're looking into blaming the social services as usual, um, because um, apparently uh, Muslim men can't lie. Still, there you go. Um, Baroness Warzai, back to her. So what does Baroness Warzai think of, well, militant secularists? Well, we have been compared to totalitarian regimes um, by Baroness Warzai. Yeah, totalitarian regimes. How? I don't know. Anyway, keep you posted. So, she uh, went out to meet the Pope earlier in the year. And she said to the Pope, she said, we, we, Britain is a country that does God. Does God. She hasn't seen the surveys. She hasn't seen how secular Britain is. But we are a country that does God, apparently. And because of this, she is now Minister of Faith. Wonderful. Can't wait to take the piss out of her, to be honest. But she's been joined by somebody else, Eric Pickles. Now, you probably don't know who Eric Pickles is, but this guy, um, he is actually cult some sort of culture secretary. I'd love to tell you what he is. Um, uh, secretary of State for Communities and Local Government. And her faith bit is joining him in this sort of department. So... He is the former chairman, also, of the Conservative Party. Um, he's a member of the Penial Pentecostal Church. Oh, that's lots of fun. Um, and that, of course, has been noted for its infiltrations in local government. Uh, he had, uh, in February this year, High Court ruled that prayer should be uh, not part of formal proceedings uh, as part of a council meeting. But it could be held before and after the meetings. Well, he went around telling everybody that they should flout the law and have these anyway and all the rest of it. So I can't wait to see what this department comes up with. Um, it's not exactly what you would expect from a government following a majority uh, of people in Britain. We are fighting against um, a government that is fighting for minorities. And I think that's, well, that's often the way with a lot of governments, but um, certain issues. But to say that Britain is a country that does God is absolutely not true. And, uh, well, I've, hopefully I've explained everything and we'll see what happens in the future. In the meanwhile, we'll be losing our Archbishop of Canterbury. Can't wait to see who replaces him either. Anyway, peace for now. Uh, I'm sorry if it's been long and boring, but uh, keep an eye on the news.